SpaceX is ramping up improvements to Starbase, specifically Launchpad 2, with the goal of having it operational by early 2025, a key component of its ambitious agenda. Meanwhile, NASA has delayed the return of astronauts after the maiden Starliner mission. Let's dive deeper into these updates in today's episode of NR Studio. Starbase's Launchpad B represents a major advancement in launch infrastructure for spacecraft. Unlike Launchpad A, which featured a six-legged donut-shaped architecture, water-cooled steel plates, and an underground water system, Pad B boasts a unique and innovative design. Extensive excavation and installation of new components define this ambitious undertaking, drawing professional artists at X, who produced elaborate 3D renderings that give fans a preview of its prospective future. Let's check out the orbital launch pad for Pad B. A user at X, known as O, who is known for creating intricate 3D animations of Starship and Starbase, recently posted a video that has garnered praise for its accuracy in depicting this latest advancement. O's commendable efforts are well worth recognizing, and I highly recommend following his story to support the continued creation of this incredible visualization. The video provides a detailed step-by-step -step explanation of the construction process for the new OLM. It begins with a frame of 12 small square supports that form the legs. Four of these will exhibit a more complex design, each supported by four smaller legs that extend outward. These carefully crafted legs will be strategically placed at the corners of the OLM, with the remaining eight legs evenly distributed along all four sides, with two on each side to form the basic square frame. Next, substantial steel plates that have a hollow configuration will be positioned on top of these legs. These plates are classified into two different categories, corner blocks and edge blocks. The corner blocks must be installed first on the four corner legs, followed by the installation of edge blocks on the remaining support legs. These components are engineered to interlock flawlessly, resulting in a cohesive framework. Subsequently, smaller steel plates will be affixed to these blocks to finalize the initial frame. Subsequent to the assembly of the foundational frame, a more substantial upper framework will be erected, incorporating corner and edge blocks bolstered by steel plates to ensure structural integrity. Steel plates will subsequently envelop the structure in concentric rings, with eight plates designated for both the inner and outer circles. The interior plates are designed to fit the central circular aperture, whereas the exterior plates exhibit a straight-edge configuration. This effective construction technique facilitates swift assembly or replacement of mounts, thereby optimizing subsequent OLM projects. Speculation even posits the incorporation of a mobile feature thereby amplifying the versatility of missions. Let us now explore one of the most fascinating elements of Pad B, its subterranean architecture. Recent photographs obtained by Starship Gazer on December 12th have unveiled the initial elements of what numerous experts speculate to be a flame trench system, akin to that found at SpaceX's Massey test facility. The similarity to Massey's trench indicates that the preceding facility likely functioned as a prototype for this more sophisticated and expansive system. Nevertheless, the Pad B flame trench will be subjected to considerably greater forces than its predecessor, as it is required to accommodate the extraordinary thrust generated by 33 Raptor engines. A substantial increase compared to the one, six engines generally tested at Massey. This innovative design integrates a dual flame bucket concept, a pioneering advancement that is set to significantly improve the efficiency and performance of the launch system. The flame trench will be meticulously situated beneath the test platform, incorporating an inclined design to effectively channel the substantial heat and pressure produced during launches. The trench will feature a rectangular framework incorporating an inclined section designed to direct exhaust forces downward, linking seamlessly to a curved C-shaped segment at the ground level. Upon completion of assembly, the entire framework will be fortified with concrete to guarantee stability, amidst the extreme conditions experienced during a rocket launch. Moreover, a manifold system will facilitate the delivery of water to the trench, thereby augmenting its functionality. This sophisticated system is engineered to alleviate the significant heat and pressure generated during launches, thereby safeguarding both the rocket and the launch infrastructure. The integration of water into the system will produce a cooling shower effect, akin to that utilized at Pad A, albeit on a considerably larger scale. 
A particularly intriguing feature of this newly designed flame trench is its perspective durability for sustained application. The water-cooled steel plate system at Pad A has exhibited indications of deterioration following numerous launches. Conversely, the flame trench is more adept at accommodating the rigorous operational cycles projected for Pad B. This augmented durability is pivotal as SpaceX prepares to realize its ambition of executing thousands of launches each year, thereby solidifying its dominance within the commercial spaceflight sector. The visualizations crafted by Chrome Kiwi adeptly depict these advancements, vividly showcasing the innovative features of Pad B. Content creators such as Chrome Kiwi are instrumental in educating and motivating the spaceflight community. Therefore, it is essential to uphold their endeavors. SpaceX's endeavors regarding Pad B symbolize much more than the mere establishment of an additional launch pad. It epitomizes the organization's dedication to expanding the frontiers of possibility in the realm of space exploration. The modular and potentially mobile configuration of the OLM, combined with the resilient and efficient flame trench system, underscores Pad B as a hallmark of SpaceX's forward-looking vision for the future of space exploration. Through ongoing innovation and enhancement of its infrastructure, SpaceX is paving the way for an era characterized by unparalleled launch frequency and dependability. Whether it pertains to the swift construction of OLMs, or the improved resilience of the flame trench, these innovations significantly advance our pursuit of achieving accessible and sustainable space travel. Let us commemorate these accomplishments by engaging with fellow aficionados on this journey. As ever, kindly remember to like and share this content to assist us in providing you with daily updates on the latest developments in space exploration. In conjunction with the most recent advancements pertaining to Launchpad B, another noteworthy occurrence has garnered the interest of space aficionados. The postponement of the return flight for the duo of astronauts who executed the inaugural mission aboard the Starliner spacecraft. NASA has recently disclosed that SpaceX's Crew-10 mission to the International Space Station has been rescheduled to late March 2025, shifting from its initial launch date in February. This modification affords SpaceX an extended time frame to complete the necessary preparations for a new Crew Dragon spacecraft earmarked for the mission. This rescheduling triggers a chain reaction, prolonging the stay of Crew-9 astronauts on the ISS as their departure hinges on the arrival of Crew-10. Crew-9 comprises NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams, who made their inaugural journey to the ISS aboard the Starliner in early June. Their mission was adjusted to align with SpaceX's timetable following the technical issues and safety apprehensions encountered by Starliner, which required an uncrewed descent back to Earth. Consequently, Wilmore and Williams remained in orbit for nearly nine months, significantly surpassing their initially scheduled 10-day mission. This modification exemplifies the inherent unpredictability of space exploration and the resilience necessary to navigate unexpected challenges. While a nine-month tenure on the ISS is notably prolonged, it is not without precedent. NASA has previously executed extended-duration missions, exemplified by the year-long twin study, wherein astronaut Scott Kelly resided aboard the International Space Station, SS, for a total of 340 days during the years 2015 and 2016. Recently, astronaut Frank Rubio distinguished himself as the first American to complete more than 365 consecutive days in space, a feat prompted by a coolant leak in his Soyuz spacecraft that necessitated an extension of his mission. Crew-9 was launched in September aboard the Crew Dragon capsule, Freedom, propelled by a Falcon 9 rocket. The capsule initially accommodated only two of the four astronauts intended for the mission, NASA's Nick Haig and cosmonaut Alexander Gorbachev. Following NASA's decision to reassign Zena Cartman and Stephanie Wilson to facilitate the eventual return of Wilmore and Williams aboard Freedom. Currently, SpaceX's Crew Dragon fleet consists of four active capsules, Endeavor, Endurance, Resilience, and Freedom. Two of these, Endeavor and Endurance, continue to be integral parts of NASA's commercial crew program, as well as private astronaut missions conducted by Axiom Space. The fourth initiative, Resilience, has shifted primarily to private spaceflight ventures under the leadership of Jared Isaacman, who was recently named by President-elect Donald Trump as NASA's incoming administrator. The incorporation of a fifth crew Dragon spacecraft into SpaceX's fleet is anticipated to add operational flexibility. For example, if an additional capsule were available at an earlier date, 
NASA could potentially facilitate the rapid return of Wilmore and Williams without disrupting the scheduled operations of the Crew-9 and Crew-10 missions. We applaud the SpaceX team's diligent efforts to equip the Dragon Fleet to facilitate our missions, as well as the adaptability demonstrated by the station program and expedition crews. This collaboration is critical to ensuring the new capsule is prepared for flight, said Steve Stitch, NASA's commercial crew program manager. The upcoming Crew Dragon spacecraft is expected to reach SpaceX's processing facility at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in early January. There, it will undergo final processing and evaluation before its maiden launch. The fabrication, assembly, testing, and final integration of a new spacecraft is a meticulous undertaking that demands significant attention to detail, Stitch said. The upcoming Crew-10 mission will include NASA astronauts Anne McLean and Nicole Ayers, JAXA astronaut Takiya Onishi, and cosmonaut Kirill Peskov. The anticipated late March launch aboard a Falcon 9 rocket will begin standard crew rotation protocol, with Crew-10 conducting station operations from Crew-9. After a brief overlap, Crew-9 is anticipated to return to Earth in early April. This long-duration mission has presented significant challenges. However, Wilmore and Williams have deftly navigated these difficulties, demonstrating their remarkable adaptability and professionalism. This further underscores the growing importance of SpaceX in ensuring the continuity of ISS operations, especially during times of uncertainty surrounding other spacecraft such as Starliner. As NASA and SpaceX continue to advance their collaborative initiatives, the progress made on the Crew Dragon fleet represents significant progress in securing reliable access to space. This progress not only advances government-led initiatives, but also expands the prospects for commercial and private astronaut missions, laying the groundwork for a more vibrant era of human space exploration. While delays are a fundamental aspect of space missions, they often act as catalysts for greater milestones. The introduction of the new Crew Dragon coupled with the anticipated increase in mission frequency, serves to further strengthen the partnership between NASA and SpaceX, paving the way for a resilient future in crew spaceflight. That concludes today's episode. See you in the next one.